Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth McCoy, your host, and today I have yet another car review. I'm excited to bring you a 2024 Honda Prologue. This is the Touring trim. There's three trims available here in Canada. This one's a top spec. As always, I want to thank uh, the OEM, in this case, Honda Canada, for allowing me the use of this press vehicle. Very excited to have Honda's first all-electric, even though it's not all their own, it's okay. You've uh, seen that I've already uh, touched the and driven the sibling of this vehicle, the Acura ZDX, uh, a couple of months ago. So this is very similar, but a little bit more toned down and more functional that Honda brings to the line. So let me get right into this review. As I mentioned, this is Honda's first all-electric offering. It's not 100% their own, but I'm very happy that they brought this to market. First all-electric offering here in North America. Of course, Honda came out with the Honda E back in Europe a couple of years ago. I think they're actually discontinuing that and going to come out maybe with these. I'm not sure. But here in North America, this is the first all-electric. We've had plug-in hybrids from them in the Clarity and, of course, HEVs throughout their entire lineup. But this is their first all-electric. And, you know, it's a very, very nice vehicle um, in the Prologue. I've had a lot of people compliment the looks of this. Actually, I had one guy in a coffee drive through yesterday when I was getting a coffee um, uh, actually yell at me and say, hey, can you stop for a sec when you get out? I stopped and he came over and said, that's a gorgeous looking car. He just absolutely loved this. He was asking me all about it. So it is turning heads, but from a very subtle perspective. And then I think that is what Honda is all about, right? They're about purposefulness. They're about you know, comfort um, without being overly crazy. They're about practicality and usage. And this car, this vehicle brings that in spades. Now, even though this is based on GM's Ultium platform, okay, just like the ZDX from the Acura side, the more sportier, the more robust, the more, you know, you could say uh, more aggressive looking vehicle, this kind of tones it down to be an everyday driver and to look fitting as a Honda product should be. And that's what this does. And it does it very well. As I mentioned, it's based on the GM Ultium platform. So you get the platform, you get the batteries, you get the motors, you get the charging connector, you get a lot, all the electronics that uh, are all part of that platform system. And even inside you get controls that are just the same as in the Blazer and in the Equinox and in the Lyric. You get, a, uh, just like the ZDX, you get a lot of those familiarities that are with the GM platform. In fact, these are built in Mexico at a plant that builds the Blazer EVs for GM. So GM is actually building these for Honda, which is interesting. So Honda doesn't have their own yet designed fully electric platform. So as others are doing with examples like VW's MEB platform and such are pulling, buying those platforms and doing their own stuff to it. And again, Honda's done that. They've tried to give this vehicle their identity and their namesake. I think they've done it pretty well. I like the design language. It's very nice. It's very smooth lines. Looks really nice and appealing to the, to the public, yet it's very, very functional. And that's the hallmark of Honda. So what do you get with this product based on the GM platform? Well, you get all wheel drive only. It's a dual motor setup uh, based on an 85 kilowatt hour battery pack that has an EPA range of 452 kilometers or 280 miles which is good. In fact, I'm seeing well over that in this nicer, you know, late summer weather that we're having here in Southern Ontario for the past week or so that I've been driving this vehicle around several days. So I'm actually seeing much better range than the EPA and I'll talk about my range near the end of this. Now the power delivery is nice. It's balanced to the motors, giving you 288 horsepower and 333 pound feet of torque. And that's again, what gets you going. This isn't a rocket ship but it's gonna get you up to speed relatively quick. There is a sport mode on this, but folks, as you know, I just try to test these, dry, uh, these vehicles at, as regular daily drivers, right? That's my, my forte. I'm not trying to do slalom courses or racetracks because you and me that are just driving around, going to work, taking family around, doing errands, whatever, we don't get to drive those situations. So it doesn't matter how it takes a slalom course or how it uh, runs a race circuit, right? These cars are practical. They're people and family and stuff movers. And this is no exception. It does it extremely well. And I'll talk about my, my thoughts in the driving segment coming up. Now for uh, level one, level two charging, it has a pretty decent charging rate. Um, I wasn't able to find the numbers, but I believe it's somewhere in between the 11 and, and um, 19 kilowatts, probably around the 11 or 12 kilowatt for your level two support, which is typical for the Altium platform. 
but uh, and fast charging up to 150 kilowatts. So definitely you can charge this overnight at home on your off tier pricing and get those lower prices. And then when you do road tripping, you get a decent charge rate of up to 150 kilowatts. Claims in that 30 minutes or so, 30 to 35 minutes, you get from that 10 or 20% to 80% range in about that. And that's typical for road trip stops today. Now, in addition to that power, again, it does allow you to tow up to 1,500 pounds with the right uh, hitch setup here. Now, for cargo space, it's got a pretty good amount of cargo space. I just have to find the button here. Um, because of that slim down roof, it, it kind of takes away a little bit from some of the cargo space, but it's a nice big opening and it's well used in the cargo space capacity, giving you uh, about 671 liters uh, or 23.7 cubic feet with the second row seats up. You flip those seats down and you get 1,543 liters or 54 and a half cubic feet. That's a good size. That's good enough to put some stuff in, do your Costco runs, throw kids hockey bags, sports equipment, whatever in there and lug it around. So it's a good size cargo space, probably not the biggest in, in the mid-size SUV, which this is where uh, this would fit into crossover -ish SUV space. Not the largest in that category, but certainly well outfitted. Having a look at the interior of the Honda Prologue, again, it's it's very functional, it's very nice interior, it got some soft touch on the top there. Um, everything just works and flows really well from a design language and from a functionality perspective. The seats are comfortable, they're a little wide, so if you're doing any aggressive turning, you'll, you'll slide around a little bit. Um, but they're very comfortable. Uh, the driver's seat on the Touring Edition has the power controls, so you can get nice and comfortable. The center console, I absolutely love. I think it's very functional and does well. Steering wheel, as I mentioned, it's exactly the same as GM's products, just with a Honda badge, so you can see that. Got your infotainment, which is uh, smaller than what you'll see in the GM vehicles, but running a similar software, Google-based, yet uh, has some differences. The center console, as I mentioned, is very functional. You've got your uh, your phone charger there, which is nice. It works well. A couple of cup holders, that kind of stuff. So within the front, everybody's uh, fine. You get access to the controls easy, the stocks, the driver's binnacle. Information is given to you quite nicely. And look at the rear seat interior. Again, very functional, very nice, very elegant, um, purposeful. Again, seats are comfortable. Got a nice big flat floor, so lots of leg room there. Good height room because uh, it does slope down even with the sunroof, but you still get decent height room. Got that nice big moon roof that opens about halfway. There's also a sliding cover to darken it up, so it's all power control. You've got a couple USB and a 120 volt outlet in the back with some vents, armrests, uh, cup holders. Again, very functional and practical. That's Honda. Give you some quick thoughts on driving the 2024 Honda Prologue Touring that this edition is. Um, again, you know, you're hearing this pattern for me on these GM-based vehicles, uh, the Altium-based platform vehicles. They're just very capable vehicles. And again, this is, is right in that, that league. Um, you know, uh, it's very comfortable. Uh, I wouldn't say the suspension is too soft. It's adequate. You can feel some heavy bumps, but in normal driving, it's handling it quite well. Uh, it's a very composed vehicle. Again, it's got that Honda build quality in it, even though these are built by GM. So I'm sure Honda's overseeing this and, and tweaking it. But, you know, I think um, Honda's done a great job in incorporating the Altium so that they can have a product in the all electric segment, right? Until they develop their own technologies um, down, down the road. So, you know, it's a very nimble vehicle from that perspective. The, the steering, uh, you have to put some effort into it. It, it. You know, you have to turn the wheel to get where you need to turn. Um, and I was expecting it just a slight, slight less uh, even though it is power boosted, uh, but it doesn't, again, hinder the driving effort or the performance of the vehicle. I've been driving this in just normal mode. There is a sport mode, as I mentioned, but I haven't really have found a need for it because it has more than enough power to get you going day by day. It's very quiet, as you can hear. I'm just using the phone by itself and recording this. Um, very very quiet and capable all the controls are well laid out everything is easy reach again i really like that with having those separate hvac controls that you go to when it rains or you need to uh, it's cold in the morning we have some dew and some uh, fog uh, on the vehicle and you need to drive that out it's really nice and handy to have everything wiper stocks everything just works really well again the controls are all gm centric you look at the wheel if you didn't see the honda badge you wouldn't know that this is a, you would think this is a gm vehicle it's exactly the same as in the other uh, evs that gm has so all, all the control but the software is tweaked a bit from a honda perspective they do support apple carplay and um, android auto in this 
so they, they've thought about that. So it does have wireless support and it works really well. I've been streaming music, using CarPlay and all this kind of stuff with it. Works very well. System entertainment, just again, it's a very competent car. I've had some passengers. They've said how quiet it is, how comfortable. So, you know, without rambling on too long, it's a very capable car. Brakes work well. I mean, there's not really much I can knock about this. Uh, it's Honda. It's capable. It's comfortable. And from a range perspective, you know, I'm seeing like about 500 kilometers in a mix of city and highway driving. Um, right now I've done almost 294 kilometers and it's showing 211 left. So that puts it at 500, which is where it's, it's well overrated. And I've done probably about 100, 110, 120 of that in highway only. So, you know, I would say EPA range is, is right in ballpark. Uh, for mixed use, if it's all highway, probably about 400 kilometers on a straight run, you know, in, in decent weather, four, four and, a, four and a quarter, let's say, and then, you know, in the city, you're pushing 500, pretty good for a car of this size. So I hope you enjoyed that look at the Honda Prologue here, the touring edition. Um, you know, my, my, obviously it's a recommendation, right? This is a fantastic vehicle. It's been a really pleasant experience, as I mentioned, to drive around all weekend with this vehicle. It's very capable, it goes. Again, it's just proving that the GM Altia platform it was something that's worth waiting for. And I'm really happy to see GM starting to roll out a lot of their products. And even in this form under the Honda and Acura badging. So certainly recommend the Honda Prologue. Now, when we look at pricing on this, they start at $59,990 Canadian. And they do qualify for the Canadian federal uh, tax incentive and some provincial incentives. So you'll have to check pricing on this. This one is $69,900. So it's about a $10,000 increase. Uh, in pricing because of the options that this has in it. Um, and this is the top spec, the medium spec uh, EXL is at 66,990. So there's just three trims basically. Then your freight destination, that's including, by the way, that price is freight destination. Um, also for US viewers, this does qualify the IRA. It still qualifies for that $7,500 federal uh, tax uh, credit or incentive, depending on how they're rolling it out for this model, but always check your federal and then check your state um, attributes as well because there might be some other incentives as well in various levels that you can get on these cars. So it, it brings it down from a Canadian perspective to a little bit more affordability. You know, definitely competes with the Tesla Model Y in the price point, definitely competes with uh, the likes of Ionic 5s, the, even in the Chevrolet Blazer area, it'll be a direct competitor against that. Um, it's a lot, a lot, you know, the VidFast VF8, there's a lot of competition in this medium, you know, mid-size SUV crossover-ish space, right? There's a lot of competition on that. So for those that love the Honda brand, that find it a trusting brand, very quality and reliable, just like other some other brands are, then they will love this product because Honda stands behind it, of course. Everything is really nice, as you've seen uh, uh, on this vehicle, and certainly worth a consideration if you're looking at the all-electric marketplace. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thanks very much for tuning in. Everybody, again, um, all of my contact information is here. You can check me out. Uh, I'm still on X for now, Twitter. Uh, we'll see how long that goes. But certainly email me if you have questions. I always enjoy getting viewer email and helping out and answering questions. And you can track where I am as well on Twitter or X because I do go out and about and do a lot of public talks and, and lectures on EV 101 and EV ownerships. So if you're interested in finding out more, you can check my progress. And if you want me to do a talk for your organization or, if, you know, or, or work environment or establishment or municipality, whatever, send me an email. I can do these things remotely as well and I enjoy doing them. So thanks very much for watching the EV Revolution Show. Everybody stay safe and until the next episode, I will see you when I see you.